So, as you can see, I've got my new router bit. It's carbide tipped. Uh, it's got two little ones on the top and two bigger ones on the side. Now, I've already used it. I flattened off a slab that I had laying around and it worked really, really well. Now, I want to try and test this on resin and end grain as well. So, in this video, I've knocked up a quick and simple end grain chopping board. I'm going to be running this over to see how it copes. Let's get on and do it. So this video is going to be following on from my last one where I explained about my new flattening jig. I talk about linear rails and what makes them so special. So if you haven't already watched this one I urge you to stop what you're doing, click the link at the top of the page and go back and watch it. This video is purely to see how this new rasp bit copes with the end grain. But there will be more videos coming where I put it to the test with a range of other materials like resin. So I'm going to choose the best side for this to go on and this is going to be the side that I want to make flat so I'm going to shim it where it needs to to make sure there's no racking I'll put these around as well to make sure it's not going to move and then we'll start routing so you'll also see I bought a collet extender as you can see there because you get to the point where you want to try and bring the bit out of the collet to give you that extra space that's not what you want to do it's very dangerous so I ended up buying a collet extender now be careful some collet extenders may not be totally true so when they spin if it's not perfectly straight it may sort of start to wobble like this and obviously at high speeds that can be extremely dangerous so make sure you check to make sure your collet is perfectly straight before you put any bit into it For the first couple of passes, I only want to be removing that hardened glue that you can see on the top. I don't want to be taking too aggressive of a cut until I've had a feel of the bit and found its capabilities. Okay, so that was my first initial pass. Um, I didn't go very deep. All I wanted to do was just get all the little snotty bits of glue off. Um, however, it, it was cutting uh, this side, which I think is more raised up than this side, obviously. Um, it must have been out of true in the clamps. To be honest, I was expecting a lot of tear out and I was almost expecting some explosions from the wood separating but I don't have any of that whatsoever um, even like on the ends I don't even have like a load of tear out it just looks so clean mm. let's do a little bit deeper take a little bit more off um, I'm gonna be playing a lot more of the board now now I'm gonna be going a little bit deeper so I'm going to be interested to see how it copes across the whole board. Let's go and do it. So I noticed that the sled the router is on is actually bowing in the middle. It's hard to notice, but I know it's there and it's going to bug the hell out of me. I think if I add some angle lines on the sides, it may rigidise it enough to fix the issue. Personally, I don't think I should have used MDF. It's very soft and it flexes too easily. Maybe ply would have been better, but hey, it's new and it's always going to have its bugs to fix. It's only how we fix them and learn going forward that really matters. So 
So I've done enough passes now that all of the board is flat. This is the only piece of tear out that I got across the whole thing. Ready? There. <laughs> oh, sorry. And there. Two bits. On the walnut. I love this new router bit. Love, 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 love. And yes, it does have a curve in it. I think it was at this stage I got the hang of it. The router I feel is still unstable in the sled, so it was tending to move around on me. I found gripping the plunge bars while moving the sled over the board really helped, and I felt happier overall with how it was cutting. As for the actual bit, I didn't once feel that it was struggling or unable to complete the cut. Sometimes you can feel if the bit is struggling, but this was not the case. The bit was so clean it didn't even leave any tram lines over the board, something that I definitely noticed in the previous video with the normal flattening bit. Once I completed flattening the board, I took it over to my table saw to square up all the sides. You'll see that I used a straight edge glued to one side to reference off of. Once I'd made that first initial cut, it was removed and I could finish off the rest easily enough. With it all cut to size, I decided to add a chamfer to the underside of the board. It's going to do two things. Firstly, it's going to make the overall board look thinner and aesthetically pleasing, and it will also add a shadow line, which just looks bloody sexy when it's on the kitchen side. So I'm going to leave that to soak in because it's end grain it's just going to suck up all of that oil. I'll probably give it a half hour and give it another coat just so it doesn't dry out and leave sort of patchy parts. So if you fancy getting one of these yourself I'll leave all the links down below in the description and until the next time I'll see you soon.